Welcome to the second episode in this math skill series. In the previous episode, you've seen the basics of Gradle and how to configure the Android Gradle plugin. In this episode, you'll learn how to extend your build by writing your own plugin. Starting with version 7.0, Android Gradle plugin now offers stable extension points for manipulating variant configuration and the produced build artifacts. Some parts of the API were finalized only recently, so I'm going to use the 7.1 version of AGP throughout this video. Let's dive in to see what you can achieve with custom plugins compared to the regular DSL configuration. I'll start with a new clean project. If you want to follow along, you can create a new project by selecting the basic activity template. Let's start with creating a task and printing out, guess what? Hello world. To do this, in the app level build Gradle file, I'll register a new task and name this task hello. Okay, now that the task is ready, let's print out hello and also add the project name. Notice this Gradle file belongs to the app module, so project name will return this module's name, which is app. Instead, I'll use project parent name, which returns the name of the project. Now it's time to run the task. Looking at the task list, I can see that my new task is listed here. I double click the hello task or execute this task through terminal and see the hello message printed in the build output. When I check the logs, I can see that this message is printed during the configuration phase. Configuration phase is really not about executing the task function like printing hello in this example. Configuration phase is a time to configure a task to influence its execution. You can tell the task about the inputs, parameters, and where to put the output. Configuration phase runs regardless of which task is requested to run. Running time-consuming code in the configuration phase can result in long configuration times. The task execution should only happen during the execution phase, so we need to move this print call to the execution phase. To do that, I can add do first or do last, which will print the hello message at the beginning or at the end of the execution phase, respectively. When I run the task again, this time I can see that the hello message is printed during the execution phase. Right now, my custom task is located in the build Gradle file. Adding custom tasks to the build Gradle file is a simple way to create custom build scripts. However, as my plugin gets more complicated, this doesn't scale well. We recommend placing the custom task and plugin implementations in a build source folder. Before writing any more code, let's move my task to build source. I'll create a new folder and name it build src. Next, I create a build Gradle file for the plugin project, so Gradle automatically adds this project to build. This is a top-level directory in the root project folder. Notice, I don't need to add this as a module in my project. Gradle automatically compiles the code in this directory and puts it in the class path of your build script. Next, I create a new source folder and a class named hello task. I convert this new class to an abstract class and extend default task. Next, I'll add a new function called task action. Annotate this function with add task action annotation and move my custom task code from build cradle to this function. Now that my task is ready, I'll create a new plugin class which needs to implement plugin and overwrite the apply function. Gradle will call this function and pass in the project object. To register the hello task, I'll call register on project.tasks and give this new task a name. At this point, I can also declare that my task depends on another task. Next, let's apply the new plugin. Note that if my project had more than one module, I could reuse this plugin by adding it to other build Gradle files as well. Now I'll execute the hello task and observe that my plugin works just like before. 
Now that I moved my task to build source, let's take it a step further and discover the new Android Gradle plugin APIs. AGP offers extension points on its lifecycle while building the artifacts. To start with the Variant API, let's first discuss what a variant is. Variants are different versions of your app that you can build. Let's say, besides a fully functioning app, you also want to build a demo version of your app or an internal version for debugging purposes. You can also target different API levels or device types. Variants are created by combining build types such as debug and release and product flavors that are defined in the build script. Ok, going back to my plugin, let's say I want to create a new build type for staging with these properties. This creates a new build type based on the debug build type, adds a host name and a suffix on the application ID. Using the declarative DSL in your build file to add a build type is perfectly fine. However, doing that in the code gives your plugin a way to influence the build in ways that are not possible or difficult to express using declarative syntax. AGP starts with the build by parsing the build script and the properties set in the Android block. The new variant API callbacks allow me to add a finalized DSL callback from the Android components extension. In this callback, I can change the DSL objects before they are used in variant creation. I'll create a new build type and set its properties. Notice in this phase I can create or register new build types and set their properties. At the end of this phase, AGP will lock the DSL objects so they cannot be changed. If I run the build again, I can see that a staging version of the app is built. Now, let's say one of my tests is failing and I want to disable unit tests to build an internal version to figure out what's wrong. To disable unit tests, I can use the before variants callback which allows me to make such changes through the variant builder object. Here I'll check if the current variant is the one I created for staging. Next, I'll disable the unit tests and set a different min SDK version. Note that if I want to change the debuggable property, I get an error that this is a read-only property when before variance is called. However, I can go back to finalize the SL callback and set this property before the DSL is finalized. After this phase, the list of components and artifacts that will be created are now finalized. If you want to see more samples like this, make sure to check out the Gradle Recipes repo which I linked in the notes below. Writing your own plugins lets you extend Android Gradle plugin and customize your build to your project's needs. In this episode, you've seen how to use the new variant API to register callbacks in Android Components extension, use selectors for filtering variants, use DSL objects to initialize variants, influence which variants are created and their properties in before variants function. In the next episode, we'll take this even further by introducing the Artifacts API and showing you how to read and transform artifacts from your custom tasks. Stay tuned. See you in the next episode.